Bidirectional folding detection or BFD is a protocol that detects faults in the bidirectional path between two folding engines, including interfaces and data links, with potentially very low latency. It operates independently of media, data protocols, and routing protocols. An increasingly important feature of networking equipment is the rapid detection of communication failures between adjacent systems in order to more quickly establish alternative paths. De detection can come fairly quickly in certain circumstances when the data link hardware comes into play. While some media, such as Sonnet, provide microsecond detection times, others, such as Ethernet, do not, therefore the need for a solution such as BFD. Network routing protocols traditionally have relied on relatively slow mechanisms to detect failures when there is no hardware signaling to help out. Traditionally, the underlying hardware signals are not understood by the various routing protocols. BFD provides a consistent failure detection method for network administrators. It detects forwarding path failures at a uniform rate rather than variable rates of different routing protocol halo mechanisms. Network profiling and planning is made easier while reconvergence or reconvergence times are consistent and predictable. BFD has two operating modes that may be selected as well as an additional function that can be used in combination with either mode. In asynchronous mode, after the BFD session has been established between two peers, these peers periodically exchange BFD control packets which act as keep alives. In the second mode or demand mode, it is assumed that a system has an independent way of verifying the forwarding path to the remote system after BFD sessions have been established. The local system would request the remote peer to stop sending BFD control packets, except when the remote peer feels the need to verify connectivity explicitly. As mentioned earlier, both BFD modes can make use of the BFD echo function. The BFD echo function detects connectivity of the forwarding link by looping back packets. In our example, router A supports BFD, but router B does not. Router B supports only the forwarding at the network layer. To rapidly detect forwarding failures between the two devices, the BFD echo function is enabled on router A. Router A sends an echo request packet to router B. Router B sends the echo request packet back along the same path to router A. Upon receiving the echo, router A is able to know that the forwarding link is up, otherwise it registers a faulted link to router B. Let's take a look at the BFD control packet format. The BFD control packet has a mandatory section and an optional authentication section. The format of the authentication section, if present, is dependent on the type of authentication in use. The version field specifies the version number. Per this array FC, that's array FC 5880, the default version is 1. The diagnostic field specifies the local system's reason for the last change in session state. This field allows the remote system to determine the reason that the previous session failed. The STA field or state field indicates the current BFD state as seen by the transmitting peer. The P field or the poll field, if set, means that the transmitting system is requesting verification of connectivity. In response, it is expecting a packet with the final or F-bit set. If this field is clear, the transmitting system isn't requesting for a response. The F field or the final field, 
the transmitting system is responding to a BFD control packet that has had the pole bit set. If, if it is clear, it is not responding to a pole. The C bit or the control plane independent field is set if the transmitting system's BFD implementation does not share fit with a with or tied to the control plane. That is, if there is a problem with the control plane, the BFD function isn't affected. If the field is clear, any failure in the control plane causes the BFD session to switch to the down state. Now, if the authentication present field is set, it means that the authentication section is present in the BFD control packet and the session is to be authenticated. The demand field, if set, means the transmitting system wishes to operate in demand mode. It knows that the BFD session is up in both directions and it is instructing the remote system to see this transmission of BFD control packets. If clear, the system is operating in asynchronous mode. The detection multiplier field contains a value that is multiplied by the transmit interval to provide a time after which it is decided there is a fault in the forwarding path. When BFD control packets aren't received within this time interval, the forwarding path is found to be faulty. BFD then notifies its clients and they begin the reconvergence process. The desired minimum transmit interval is the minimum interval in microseconds that the local system would like to use when transmitting BFD control packets. While required minimum receive interval is the minimum interval between received BFD packets that this system is capable of supporting. Another very important interval is the required minimum echo receive interval. This is the minimum interval between received BFD echo packets that this system is capable of supporting. If this value is zero, the transmitting system does not support the receive of BFD echo packets. The final field, authentication type field. If the A field is set in the mandatory section, the authentication type field specifies the type of authentication in use. Now, BFD control packets are transmitted in UDP packets when used within an IPv4 or IPv6 packet. All the control packets used in a single session must be from the same source port. Your security policies should permit BFD control packets for the session to become established. The source port number must be chosen from within the range of 49,152 and 65,535. The destination port for BFD control packets in a synchronous or demand mode is 3,784. But when the BFD echo function is in use, the destination port number becomes 3785. BFD stations can cycle within four states. At mean down, init, up and down. The STF field of the BFD control packet indicates the current state. The BFD machine implements a three-way handshake before session setup or session teardown. This ensures that the two systems detect the status change. BFD is initially in the down state. This is indicated in the control packets routers A and B exchange with each other. From router B's perspective, after receiving the BFD packet, it changes its state to init. Router B no longer processes the received BFD packets if the state filters down. The BFD state change on router A is similar to that of router B. After receiving the BFD packet with the state field as init, router B changes the local BFD session status to up. A similar process is carried out on router A. You can create two types of BFD sessions on IP links. A single hop BFD session detects IP connectivity 
of the folding link between two directly connected systems. The BFD station is bound to the outbound interface. A multi-hop BFD session detects IP connectivity of paths between two indirectly connected systems. These paths may span multiple hops or overlap. The BFD session is bound to the peer IP address but not to the outbound interface. Unlike dynamic routing protocols, static routes do not have a detection failure mechanism. That is, they do not have a dedicated failure detection mechanism. After a fault occurs, the network administrator manually deletes the corresponding static route. For large or critical infrastructures, this is time-consuming and extends the downtime. Enabling BFD for static routing allows fast detection of the forwarding link status. A static route can be bound to a BFD session. If the BFD session is in the up state, the static route is installed in the routing information base. If the BFD session is down, the route is deleted from the routing information base. Bidirectional forwarding detection provides fast peer failure detection times, independently of all media types, encapsulations, and routing protocols. By sending rapid failure detection notices to the routing protocols in the local router to initiate the routing table recalculation process, BFD contributes greatly to reduce overall network convergence time. Let's look into the interaction between OSPF and BFD, for example. When OSPF discovers a neighbor, it sends a request to the local BFD process to initiate a BFD neighbor session with the OSPF neighbor router. The BFD session is established. What happens when a failure occurs? The BFD session is torn down. BFD notifies the local OSPF process that the BFD neighbor is no longer reachable. The local OSPF process tears down the OSPF neighbor relationship. If an alternative path is available, the routers will immediately start converging on it. This marks the end of our BFD course. In it, we have seen the role BFD plays in speeding up network convergence after the failure of a link.